How you doing everybody? Nick DiRigilio here and today's video is how to build a drum kit from scratch. So if you're a seasoned player, you've been playing a long time, you obviously probably already know how to build a drum kit. But if you're a first time buyer, you're a parent buying a kit for your kid, first time player, then it might be kind of daunting to open up these boxes, especially the more affordable drum kits. The more affordable the drum kit, the more you have to put together for the first time. When you get up into the really high echelon drum kits, they all come in their own boxes, the drums are all put together. They make it a little bit easier on you when you spend a lot of money. But as a first time player, you don't necessarily need to spend that much money. So we're gonna start from scratch, open the boxes for the very first time, show you what all the parts are, show you how they're put together, show you how to set up the kit ergonomically, especially if you're a first time player, you wanna be comfortable and have the toms and the snare drum in the right spot, not too high, not too low, all of those things. We'll go through all of that stuff and hopefully show you how easy it is to put together a drum kit. Now there's many affordable drum kits on the market, but I picked today the Pearl Export Kit and the Tama Imperial Star. Both of these kits are very similar in a lot of ways, but they have two differences in the tom mounts and in the kick drum hoops and how they connect to the kick drum. So I thought I'd show you the two differences. Other than that, it's pretty much universal. Everything you're gonna see on these two drum kits is pretty much the same as on every drum kit that's out there. I don't know if I forgot to mention this in the opening of this video, but both of these kits are complete drum kits with everything included. Snare drum, cymbals, hardware, all the accoutrements. So let's start with the pearl box here and uh, let's get started. First thing you're gonna see in this box is the kick drum heads will be on top. Let's just put those aside for now. And this is where it gets a little daunting. Like I said, everything is stuffed in these boxes. So you're gonna have to pull each piece out and let's see what we got here. They put a lot of cardboard in here to protect the drums so nothing gets hurt during shipping. All right, so here's the floor tom. Now thankfully, the floor tom is already put together in this Pearl Export Kit. So I'm gonna just put this up front. We'll start pulling out the kick drum pieces. First thing is gonna be the kick drum hoop. They keep it protected by this little foam ring. Take that off right there. More cardboard. Now we'll pull out the kick drum. Pearl gives you a pillow for the kick drum, which is nice for dampening the kick drum. And then the second hoop is down there at the bottom. You'll notice on the kick drum hoops for the Pearl Export Kit that one of them has this piece of, well, it feels like sandpaper on your fingers, but it's here to protect the kick drum pedal. When it connects to the hoop, it's gonna protect the hoop and not kind of bite into it because you're gonna tighten down the kick drum pedal onto the hoop. This just kind of helps protect the hoop. Let's take the plastic and all the paper off the kick drum and let's see what we got. Now, thankfully in the factory, when they box these kits up, they really pack them nicely to protect them so there's no scratches when you first take them out of the box. So you're gonna have to go through this stuff, take all these little bits off, uh, just the first time you put the kit together. After this, obviously, you're never gonna have to do it again. This particular kit has a great silver finish. It looks very cool. So there you have it, this is the raw kick drum, ready to go without any heads on it yet, obviously. Let's start opening up the rest of the stuff. You will get directions inside the boxes to show you what to do, but hopefully this video will help you move past having to read about doing it and just getting right into it and doing it. Right now I'm gonna break into box number two. This will have the tom-toms, the snare, and let's see what else. You'll notice in this box there's a lot of stuff. They, it's very creative how they pack all these things into one box, but there's gonna be the floor tom legs, some other bits and bobs, the, the rack toms, the snare drums in the bottom, so let's pull it all out and see what we got. These are the tom mounts. You'll unloosen it right up here. Put it at about 90 degrees to start with. And this will go inside the top of the kick drum and will attach the rack toms to this piece. 
Drum key. Ah, okay. These are the claw hooks for the kick drum heads and the kick drum hoop. They look like that once you take them out. One of the rack toms. Here's our matching snare. And our second rack tom. All right, I'm gonna stop here for the moment. I'm not gonna open up the other couple boxes because the other box right here is all the hardware that comes for this kit and the symbols. So we'll get to that in just a minute. Now I'm gonna go over here to the Tama Imperial Star Box, tear this one open, and let's see how they pack the drums in this box. All right, with the Tama kit, same kind of thing. You're gonna have some heads on the top. This one, you're gonna have floor tom heads and your kick drum heads. Let's put this up front here. This box has the symbols. You get a set of Minel symbols with this Tama Imperial Star Kit. They pack them right on top here, so I'm gonna put them on the side of the box. All right, and then everything else is inside. They put things inside the, the kick drum, is the floor tom and the seat and the snare, so they're all inside here. Let's take them out. First thing right in the center is warranty card and your seat. A lot of foam pieces go in between the, the different shells and the outer shells so they don't get scratched. So in the middle here is the small rack tom. This Tama kit has an equally cool look. The more affordable drum kits they make, that they make these days, they really put some time and effort to making them look and sound really great. So this has a cool black wrap on it, very nice. More cardboard to protect the drums. Take out the foam. And here is your floor tom shell. Now this is where some stuff can get a little bit confusing. In order to pack the drums up neatly and have it fit into one or two boxes, they do things like this. So the two hoops for the floor tom are connected to the bottom of the floor tom here. So we'll have to take them off, very simple to do, and then put the heads on. A little bit different than the pearl kit, which is the floor tom came already assembled. So I'll show you how to do that in just a second. All right, so grab your drum key, and let's get these hoops loosened up and off of this floor tom. I should mention, that these tension rods that came out of the hoops right now will be used with the other tension rods you're going to get to put your heads on. So don't put these somewhere or throw them away or anything like that. You're going to reuse these. There you go. Floor tom hoops. All right, now let's take the rest of this stuff off the kick drum so we can have it all apart and uh, put the heads on and put the drum kit together. First thing you want to see is that they put some string on here to tie the hoops onto the shell. Again, this is just for shipping and to keep it scratch free and safe. So grab a pair of scissors and let's just cut those little strings off first. There's one on the other side. There you go. And now the hoops come right off. Let's put those aside. All right. Get that out of the way. Your other hoop is right here. Now we're ready to go start building the kick drum. Okay, now we're gonna break open the second box of the Imperial Star Kit. I wanna mention again, the one difference between this and the Pearl Kit is everything else for the Imperial Star Kit is in this second box. So all of the hardware, the tension rods, other drums, it's all packed in there. So let's tear it open and see what we got inside. Snare drum. Assembled parts. Let's see what we got inside the assembled parts box. 
All right, here you go. This is where you might get a little confused if you're a first time drum builder. There's a lot of stuff in here. So, a manual if you need it. These are the legs for the kick drum spur. You'll see right here. Let me loosen this up so I can show you what I'm talking about. Here we go. The spur fits right in here. Everybody makes a spur a little bit differently, and in order to ship this drum in these little boxes, like I said, they have to figure out ways to pack it, so they take the legs off and put it in the box here. But again, just goes in and out like that. It's very simple. Lots of tension rods. And your tom mount to rack the toms on the kick drum. Okay, so that's all of the drums for both kits out. The rest of the hardware for the Tama kit is in here. We'll get to that in just a second, just like the hardware is in the box over there for the Pearl kit. But for this Tama kit, your rack toms are already put together with the heads on. So all we'll have to do is put the heads on the, the bass drum itself and the floor tom. And we just have to put the head on the Pearl bass drum over there. All right, again, if you've built drum kits before, I'm repeating myself here, and this is stuff you already know. But if you're a beginner, you've never done this before, I think it's worth saying, what is the front and the back of the kick drum? The batter side is the, where you, the kick drum will hit the head, and the resonant side is the front of the kick drum. The way you could figure this out is the spurs go on the front of the kick drum. So like I said, here are the legs. Let's make sure this is loose first, which it is. Don't have to worry about placing this right now. Just get it in here and installed. Tighten her back up. Okay. I'm going to turn the drum around, do the same thing. That's loose already. Put the leg in, tighten her up. There you go. Again, the spurs are the front of the kick drum. Basically, it's the head that has the logo on it, and the heads are right here. All right, I took all that plastic off of the heads, the floor tom, and the kick drum. Here is the front head. Again, it has the logo on it. We're going to put it on the front of the kick drum. The easiest way to do it is to turn the drum, lay it flat on the ground like that. You want your logo to be at the top of the drum where the tom mount is. Once you get the hoop on, you can center it. It's pretty easy. All right. I wanted to talk to you about these kick drum hoops because they're both a little bit different. This is a traditional kick drum hoop where the claw hook that holds the hoop and the head on looks like this. See, it's a hook, and it hooks on the front of the kick drum like that, and then tightens the head onto the drum. This is how the majority of hoops are put on kick drums. The Imperial Star, have a very cool thing here. This is a plastic hoop, and there's no claw hooks. The tension rod, which is right here, goes right through the hole and attaches to the kick drum. So I just wanted to show you that this particular hoop is a little bit different than most. They make it a little bit easier. You don't have to worry about claw hooks. It's a little bit less hardware. But as you grow when you're playing, you'll see that most drums are a traditional hoop like this. And before we assemble this one, remember I told you that one of the hoops has this piece of sandpaper to protect the kick drum pedal. So make sure when you're attaching the front head, which is the head with the logo, you get the hoop that does not have that piece of protection on the hoop, all right? Let's put that here for one second. Let's grab the pearl logoed head, put the logo on top, which is right where the tom mounts are, okay? Before we get started, I have one more thing to say about this hoop. You'll notice on the hoop, there's a flat end and a rounded end, okay? The flat end is what attaches or touches the head, okay? The rounded end is for the claw hook to go over. Make sense? The flat side is what touches the head. The rounded side is what the claw hook goes over like that. All right, let's start putting these kick drums together and building this drum kit. Grab your tension rods. Just get them one in each hole to get started. Okay. Put each tension rod in just a little bit. This way, just to get you started, make it easier once you get your drum key out. A couple of twists on each one. Now you're ready to go.
One thing I would suggest to do when you're getting started here is to finger tight all of the tension rods. So just go around really quickly. They, they spin in really fast. Doesn't take you no time. This way, it's easy to get tension even around the drum, which is very important when you're tuning a drum, if they're all kind of at the same position when you start actually tightening the head on. Okay, so we're gonna stop that right and get over to the pearl drum and show you how this one works. So, same thing, grab each claw hook and tension rod, put it over the hoop, just give it a couple spins to get started. Let's do that around the whole drum. Okay, same thing, just make sure your head is centered. Now, finger tighten all the lugs, tension rods into the lugs. All right, with all the tension rods finger tight, now we're ready to tighten the head down and go from there. So quickly, now I'm gonna do the same thing with the other side of the drum. So hang with me and we'll be right back. Quickly here before we put on the batter side head on both of these kick drums, I want to point out a couple of small differences just so you know. The pearl drum here comes with a hole in the resonant head and they also give you a pillow if you so choose to use it. There's a little piece of Velcro strip on the bottom here, the other side of the Velcro is on the pillow and this would be the time to put the pillow in rather than having to stuff it through the hole after you put both heads on. So. Just kind of stick it in here, like so. You can adjust it through the hole in the other head after the drum is put together. The Tama drum does not have a hole in the front head. You can buy an accessory to cut a hole in the front head if you want to. You can get a coffee can and a razor blade and cut the hole like that. Done that many times. Or you can keep both heads on. A lot of drummers like to have both heads on their drums, but this would be the time to put a little bit of dampening inside the drum. You know, they make all kinds of good accessories to use, but you can use a, a packing blanket. Just don't use too much. A pillow, as long as it's a thin pillow, not a ton of dampening where you completely kill the tone of the drum. So even a couple of towels would work as well. But this would be the time to put that in there before you put the resonant head on. All right, I've put the resonant head on both drums. Now this is a spot where we could talk, if I talk about tuning, it would take another hour. It's a whole other subject, but a good frame of reference, especially for you beginners that have never tuned a drum or put a head on or anything like that. What you want to do after you finger tighten the tension rods into the lugs, okay, get out your drum key and start tightening out. And what you want to do is start from one side and go diagonally to the other. The key here is to get the tension the same all around the drum. This is the same for your toms, for your snare, and your kick drums. It all works the same no matter what drum. So, what I suggest you do for a beginner is give it maybe two or three turns, okay, all the way around, and then go diagonally across the drum and do it again. Then go to the next lug and so on, all the way around the drum. And what you're going to notice, as you tighten, you'll see some ripples in the head, okay? You want to take those ripples out. You want the head to be completely flat around the whole drum. Again, if the tension is even around the whole drum, you won't have any ripples at all. So again, one lug diagonally across, you'll see some ripples coming in, especially on the looser side, okay? Now you're not tuning the drum right now, you're just getting the ripples out, getting the head seated on the drum. Do that all the way around, make sure that the head's nice and flat, no ripples, and then we'll talk about trying to make the drum sound good a little bit later on in the video. All right, now our kick drums are ready to go. All right, the last thing we need to do for the Tama kit is install the heads on this floor tom. Then we can break out the hardware and assemble the whole thing and actually make some music here. So let's put the heads on this floor tom real quick. I wanna say something about the heads they give you with this Tama kit and this floor tom. You'll notice one head has the Tama logo on it. The other head does not. You'll also notice if you play with the head a little bit, the top head is thicker. The bottom head is a little more papery and thinner, okay? That is the bottom head. The thinner head is the bottom head. That's the one that's gonna go on the side with the floor tom legs, okay? So let's do that one first. All 
All right, now I put the tension rods into the lugs. Now this was a little bit different when I talk about the finger tightening of the tension rod in the lug. When it got to a certain point, I couldn't really turn it with my finger anymore. So I got it all to even around the whole drum as far as I could go with my fingers. Then I got the key out. Now here, you're gonna do the same kind of thing. You wanna get all the ripples out of the head, okay? Make the tension even. So turn on one side, go diagonally across the head and turn on the other side. And feel it out, get the tension as even as you can. Get the ripples out of the head. One thing you don't want to do is tighten up the head so much that when you put the other side on, you won't have any tone in the drum. So at this point, just get the ripples out of the head, but don't tighten the drum, the head on the drum too much yet. Yep. All right, we're going to put the, the top head on. This is the, the head that you hit. Now, this is really nitpicky, but what I like to do when I put heads on the drums is I take the logo and I match it up with the logo on the outside of the drum. So right here, there's the logo. You see it? I take the logo on the head and I put it in the same spot just makes it look nice and neat and uniform. All right, the heads are installed now on this floor tom. All the other drums have the heads on, on both kits, so now we can get the hardware out, get the cymbals, put these drums together, and actually make some music here. All right, now it's time to break out the hardware of both kits. I'm gonna do this kind of quickly here, but it's pretty easy too. For both kits, you get a boom stand, which will hold your ride cymbal, you get a straight stand, which will hold your other crash cymbal, hi-hat stand, kick drum pedal, and uh, other things as well. The Tama kit comes with a throne. The Pearl kit does not come with a throne. Other than that, you get everything you need. So let's start going. When you first break out the hardware of either of these kits, you're going to be pulling off a lot of cardboard, a lot of wrapping. It's a, it's a little bit tedious to start with, but again, you only have to do this one time. This is the base of the throne. And this is one of the small things I think that could throw somebody for a loop when they've never done this before. How does this work, okay? You have two knobs right here. Unscrew that knob and the base of the throne opens up, okay? This is the, the weird part here. Take out the middle tube, tighten it down, and this is what helps you. This part up here on top, you have to loosen. It's what helps keep the height of the throne. It's like a memory lock here, okay? So we need to loosen that up first. Here's my key. There you go, okay? Now you're gonna adjust the height wherever you need to once you start sitting down behind the kit. But tighten that on there like that. Put your base on. There's a wing nut under the seat to tighten the seat down, and there you go. All of the hardware is going to come folded up in its box in order so it can fit in the box, right? So this is your snare stand here. Again, you have the base. Loosen the wing nut. Widen the base a little bit right there just so you can kind of get started and tighten her back up. This is the snare drum basket, but the arm is folded up. So loosen the wing nut. Pull the arm down. Put it anywhere for right now. Just tighten it back up so you can get started. This goes right in the hole there. Tighten that down. And then when you open up the basket, that's where your snare drum is going to sit. Here's our kick drum pedal. This one's really easy to uh, put together because it's pretty much already put together. All you have to do is attach the spring, okay? There's a little white piece, a little round thing right there, and the hook of the spring, just pull it up and put the hook right over that round piece, and there you go. The kick drum pedal's ready to go. There's nothing else you need to do. So it's very simple. Again, spring comes off like that and attaches the exact same way. There you go. There's adjustments you can make now with the pedal, raising the footboard, moving the beater back and forth. We won't talk about that right now. Just out of the box, attach the spring, and you're ready to go. Just so you know, the beater loosens right there with that little lug nut right there, and the beater pulls out if you want to take it out. Put it back in, then you can adjust the height of the beater as well, and then just tighten it right back up. This is the straight cymbal stand, comes in two pieces. Again, loosen the base. Put the top right in here. Tighten her down. Now there's also a third section. There you go. So it stands up pretty tall. 
And in order to get the top, loosen the wing nut right here, your symbol's gonna attach right there. This is the boom symbol stand. Just means that there's a boom arm that telescopes the symbol out like this, okay? Comes in three pieces here. Widen the base, tighten the center section on, just like that. Now for the boom part, loosen the wing nut here. You'll see that this loosens up and spins. Stick the boom arm just in that hole right there. There you go, okay? You turn it sideways so you can see it better. This is where you can adjust the angle wherever you want. Tighten the wing nut. Loosen this one right here so you can get the symbol attachment up and you're good to go. What's cool about these particular things is that the boom arm, when you're packing this up, if you're gonna take it to a gig or you're gonna play somewhere outside of your home, what you do is loosen this nut, turn the boom, turn it straight up and down. Now the boom arm will go inside the whole stand just for easy transport, okay? If you want to set the symbol again, pull it almost all the way out, turn it a little bit, get it to the angle you want, tighten her down, you're ready to rock. And finally for this kit is the hi-hat stand. Inside the box it comes in two pieces. Let me show you how it gets put together. Let's start with this piece first. This is the footboard, just pull it down, okay? Move this piece of cardboard. At the bottom, they have the two little arms tied together. So you just gotta take this little piece of string off. You could squeeze it together, okay? That little string comes off, just like that. Now before you get attached that, let's open up the tripod, like you do with all the stands. There you go, and tighten her down. Now these two little legs that I was squeezing together, there's two holes at the base of this, the hi-hat stand right here, and they insert into those two holes. The key here for the base of the hi-hat stand is to make sure it's flat on the ground, okay? If your tripod is up like that, you'll see there's no, it's not sturdy and placed properly. So flatten it down, push down on the top of the tripod, and just make sure everything is flat flush to the ground that you have, okay? Now let's talk about the top here. I only wanna talk about this, it's just, it's just because every company packs their stuff a little bit differently, okay? So what you wanna do here, in order for packing, they tighten the clutch onto the bottom. So just loosen this. This piece is called the clutch. This holds the top symbol of your hi-hats on to the rod, okay? Just loosens like that at the bottom and then you put your symbol in between these two pieces of felt and then tighten it back on. I'll show you how to do that in just a second. Now, take the rod out. The piece with the threads is what goes in to the, the stand right here, okay? So that's, all, that's what might be confusing. When they pack it, it's kind of placed upside down. This is the top of the hi-hat stand. This, is the, this piece of felt is where the bottom symbol sits on top of, okay? So pull the rod out like this. And screw it into the base. There you go. Now this whole thing goes up over the rod like this and the rod goes right up the center. Just like that, see? That's really it. It's pretty simple once you see it, but if it's the first time getting out of the box, it could be a little bit confusing. So at this point, just tighten it down. We're gonna put the clutch on the, on the rod just to make sure it's all in one place. We'll keep going from here. All right, now I'm gonna rip open this box with the Pearl hardware and we're gonna speed through this one a little bit because it's gonna be generally the same as the Tama hardware, okay? If there's something I need to stop and tell you about, I will surely do that, but for now, I'm just gonna rip this open and put this stuff together. Let's go. I'll say something about this pedal compared to the other one. This pedal is already put together. The spring is already connected here as opposed to it was with the Tama pedal. So I thought I would just quickly show you, but as you can tell, there's no beater. The beater is inside the box. Here's the beater. Let 
loosen the little lug nut and tighten her down. Now you're looking at this out of the box going, okay, that doesn't look quite right. The beater's already past where it would be. The pedals, the footboard's all the way down flat. So how do I adjust this? It's super simple. I'll show you right now. You see this lug screw right here on top of the spring assembly. So loosen that up. Get this out of the way. There we go. Loosen that up. Now you have full adjustment of wherever you want the beater to live. Okay? Simple as that. So get it back a little bit in its sort of normal position and tighten her down. And you're good to go. I'm going to take a quick second here and talk about this particular hi-hat stand just to show you the differences between the two and how they pack. This particular one, remember on the Thomas stand, the clutch was actually attached to the bottom of this tube here. In this pack, it's attached to the top, sort of normal, right? So just take off the clutch, loosen it, and this is actually the top of the hi-hat stand, the felt where the bottom symbol will sit. Put that aside. Get that piece of cardboard out of the way. Let's take off this piece of plastic, which is just there for shipping to protect the footboard. Okay. Now at the bottom, the two feet are held together with a piece of rubber band. Just get that out of there. There you go. They squeeze just like the Thomas stand did. Okay. Now first thing I want to do is put the tripod down. Okay. Now I'll turn it upside down. Squeeze those little feet and put them in the two holes, which are right there at the bottom. There you go. Now this particular stand, again, push it down on the ground, make sure it's nice and flat and sturdy, and tighten her up. What's cool about this hi-hat stand is that it also, the base also swivels. Okay? You can move it around wherever you want. So that's really good if you have a double pedal. Another pedal can go right next to it here. Okay? Or if you're trying to get it a little bit closer to your snare drum, the cymbals for comfort of playing, you can swivel the bass and move the, the hi-hat stand closer to the rest of the kit. Just something I thought I'd point out to you. But for now, we'll keep it right in the center, tighten her down, take the rod, attach it to that piece in the center of the tube right there. Just tighten it. You don't have to go super tight, okay? You're going to want to take this apart at one time, I'm sure. Now take the tube right over the top of the rod, goes all the way down, and then take your clutch and put it over the rod, and you're ready for cymbals. All right. For this is the boom stand for the pearl set. The only difference is that the boom arm is actually already packed with it inside the tube here. So to get the, take the boom arm out, let's first attach this tube to this piece. It'll just make it easier for us. Tighten her down. Now, this is where it's loosened, so pull the boom arm out. There you go. When you want to pack it back up at the end of the night on your gig, again, just put it back inside the tube, just like that. Now, it's all the way out. Make sure it's loose enough. Put it in just a little bit. Now turn it to wherever you want, whatever angle you want. Put the boom arm all the way through just like that. Tighten the wing nut and you're good to go. And up here is your cymbal tilter. All right, the final thing we gotta do is get the cymbals out, out of their packing. And uh, then we'll be ready to put these drum kits actually together and make some noise. So let's first, I wanna show you the minor cymbals that come with the Tama kit. Get some cool stickers, pull it out of the plastic, and they're all attached with this screw assembly here, so it's not on there too tight, it's just finger tight. Unscrew that, there you go. Push it through, so you take all the cymbals apart. So first, your biggest cymbal, that's your ride cymbal. Get a 16-inch crash cymbal, and your two hi-hat cymbals, and a bunch of cool stickers. For the pearl kit, you get a set of Zildjian cymbals, and they, they come in a little separate box. Let's just open these up real quick here. All right, there's your Z ride symbol, your 16 inch crash, and 
and your two hi-hat cymbals. Okay, everything is out of the boxes, everything is assembled and ready to be set up. So I'm gonna make a little bit of space here, clean up this area, and we're gonna put these two drum kits together. All right, I've cleaned up the space a little bit, got a little bit organized, and now we're gonna actually put these drum kits together. First thing we're gonna do is start with the kick drums. Let's first start with the spurs. Loosen up the wing nut, pull the spur down. Now this one goes all the way around, goes forward. So you're gonna have to kind of find the spot where you like the spur to be. What I mean by that is straight up and down really is not the best spot to do it. You wanna have it angled forward just a little bit. So you can, you'll feel the notches inside here. So get about one space forward and go ahead and tighten up the wing nut. Now there's this one here too that, that uh, brings the little telescoping arm in and out. Start for, you know, just about halfway down for now. What I want to show you is, for shipping, they don't leave the little pokey end out. They keep it inside this rubber foot. So what you need to do is unscrew this screw right here and get all the way down, and then this foot will screw in and the little sharp end, which will hold, help hold the kick drum in place, is right there. So, see what I mean? I'll do that again for you. It comes out of the box like that, so just unscrew the bottom and then the foot will screw out, will screw in, and the little pokey end will come out. It works the exact same way on this Tama kick drum. Remember, this is the one where the leg is uh, packed separately in the box. So, I'll show you how it works here. Unscrew the bottom bit, okay, and it screws all the way down at the bottom. Then the foot screws in, and the sharp end comes out, okay? This you can actually make not so much of the sharp end come out, okay? So you can kind of, see what I mean? It's about halfway and then you tighten the two together and you just left with the little poke end. Now stick it in here, tighten it on to start with, loosen the wing nut, and get it to where it's, again, it's just about one click forward then straight down. Now you'll notice, right? The arm isn't going all the way to the ground, so just loosen a little bit. And what's cool about this particular drum, they put some marks inside the spur right here, so if you do have to take your kick drum apart or tear it down and take it to and from gigs, you can remember where, which line you had your leg set at and get it to the exact same spot every time. Right, so right about now, I think it's, let's see, one, about one and a half, two lines up, and I'll tighten it in do the same to the other side. One quick thing to mention, the angle of the spurs. A good way to see, make sure you have both spurs at the exact same angle is to stand over the drum and take a look and you'll be able to tell where it is, okay? Now, if you let the feet out farther, okay, this is how, that's, that's as far as these feet go, on this particular drum, you'll notice that there is some space at the bottom of the drum here. The drum is at a little bit of an angle. This is a little bit of point of preference for most drummers. I like it when the drum is at a little bit of an angle because then when you put the kick drum pedal on, it's going to lift the front of the drum up a little bit, but the drum is still at an angle. The beater of the kick drum hitting the head is going to have a little bit less distance to have to go to hit the head flush, okay? But that being said, some players like to have their kick drum flat on the ground. It's a point of preference, but for this video, I'm gonna assume that you're all like me and you like to have the kick drum angled up a little bit, okay? So, let's look at the, the Tama kick drum here. Stand over the top, I can tell that the angle of both spurs is the same. I'm going to, now remember these feet come all the way out, so I'm just gonna to go to the very first line on the spur, tighten her up, do the same on this side, and then we'll move on. First line, they're both even. There's a little bit of the space at the bottom for when I put the kick drum pedal on. All right, let's move forward now. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna turn both kick drums like this. So with this set, you'll see the floor tom side of the drum kit, and this side, you'll see the hi-hat, snare drum side, okay? So there you go. First thing I want to do now is put the floor tom legs on. So I grab the legs of the pearl kit. It's easiest when the drum is upside down like this. So just put the floor tom legs in. Don't worry about 
exactly where you have them yet. All right, this is a little bit nitpicking, but this is what I like to do, and it always makes it so the floor tom is always nice and sturdy, and you're able to maneuver it within the kit. What I do is take the badge, you see the pearl logo and badge right here, and I make sure that is pointing outward, so like the audience can see the badge of the drum kit. What that does is it puts this one leg to the left of the badge, right next to the kick drum pedal and you can, you'll, it just makes it for more room to maneuver the drum when you want to kind of get it at, right at the exact spot, okay? So point the badge outward. The audience can see it, they know what kind of drums you're playing, and you're able to maneuver the drum just that much more easily. Next, time to mount the rack toms. And this is the reason why I chose these two different drum kits, because the Tama kit has your more traditional rack tom mount, and Pearl has their proprietary rack tom mount. Both very easy to use, but I wanted to show you both kinds because a lot of drum kits have a typical mount like this. Pearl has this, just like so you can see the difference so you know what you're looking at. We'll start with the Tama one. All you have to do is loosen the wing nut and stick it on into the kick drum. The tube goes down inside the drum. Take the wing nuts, loosen them up so that the arms are pointing upward. At this point, before I put the drums on, I'm going to loosen, they have memory locks on here. I'm going to loosen these up just to kind of get them out of the way. And then when you place the, tr the drum where you want, you can put the memory lock back. Okay. There you go. Now, same thing for the pearl. The tube goes in. There you go. At this point, I'll loosen all of these memory locks as well. Kind of get it out of the way. There you go. All right, let's mount the toms. First, grab the rack, your first rack tom. Loosen the wing nut, get it on there. Now this, pointing the drum away from the floor, the kick drum is not where you want it to be, obviously. Where I want you to start first is just kind of get it on and kind of sort of pointing straight up. We're going to place these drums in just a minute. Let's go to the next drum and put it on. Okay, there you go. They're both mounted. Let's go over to the pearl kit and do the same thing. Loosen the wing nut. Next thing we're going to do is connect the kick drum pedals to both kick drums. I'll start with the Tama one first. This kit comes with a very nice feeling Iron Cobra 200 pedal. This is a really smooth, nice feeling pedal. You'll see a wing nut right here. Loosen this up as far as you can, and then when you tighten it down, it's going to squeeze the kick drum hoop. Just push your kick drum up a tiny bit, slide it onto the hoop, and let the kick drum fall back down. Now take that, that screw and tighten her down. You don't have to squeeze really hard and crunch the kick drum hoop, okay? Just tight enough to make sure the, the pedal doesn't move and then you're good to go. The same goes for Pearl's pedal. Make sure the wing nut is nice and loose. Push the kick, the kick drum up a little bit. Might need to loosen it a little bit more, but slide it on. Let the drum back down and then tighten her up. The next thing I'm going to do here is get the snare drum on its stand and sort of placed, and then we'll talk about how to place the drums in the right spot to be comfortable. All right, we got the snare drum stand here ready to go, okay? In this particular stand, you loosen this nut, and this is what tilts the basket forward and backward. So let's just kind of get it straight up and down to start with. This screw right here is what tightens the basket onto the snare, so it'll make it go up like this the tighter you have this screw. So to start with, just make sure you have it open enough to fit the drum on. Place the drum on. Now you want the, basically the fingers of the snare basket not to be touching any of the lugs. 
either right next to it or in between lugs. Then take that bottom black screw and tighten her up. Do not over tighten the snare drum onto the basket. Really just want it enough there so it holds. So in case you have to lift up the snare, it'll pick up the stand with the snare, but it's not squeezing the drum and choking out the sound. Now what I like to do when I'm in placing the snare drum there is I make sure that the wing nuts are facing me in case I need to bend over and loosen to raise or lower the drum. I don't have to reach around the back of the drum. So small thing, but so face the wing nuts towards you. I also like one of the legs of the tripod facing me. So you have two back at the drum and one facing you. That way when you're hitting your hard rim shots, you're pulling the drum forward a little bit, right? Because of the force of the stick hitting the drum. With that tripod leg facing you, the snare drum won't go anywhere. It can't fall over, it can't call, fall towards you or anything like that. So face one leg of the tripod towards you. Now you can loosen this wing nut, turn the drum and you're good to go. Another thing I like to try and do, just to tell you, is the throw off of the drum right here. It's what turns the snare wires on and off. I like to have that as close to me as possible, not on the back side of the drum. So if you set the snare drum stand and put the snare drum on, but the throw off is back here, loosen the, the snare basket, take the drum off and turn the snare around so the throw off is basically in between your, your legs. Let's get the uh, Thoma snare on now. Same principle with this snare, snare stand, it just has a few different parts on how it works. Again, I'm going to have the wing nuts facing out towards me, one of the tripod legs facing to me, towards me where I'm sitting. On this one, this round piece here is what tightens the snare drum basket up onto the drum, okay? Righty tighty, lefty loosey. Like normal, put the drum on, have the throw off facing you, which is right here on this drum. The basket fingers are either right next to a lug or in between the two lugs all the way around. And then go ahead and just tighten her up. Okay, now I can pick up the whole drum in the stand. All right, now everything's sort of put together and now it's, we need to adjust the drums to actually play them. I'm gonna do this now before the cymbals are up to show you, in my opinion, the best way to set up the drums, especially if you're a beginner, okay? If you're a seasoned pro and you've been playing a certain way, sitting a certain, in a certain height, having the drums angled a certain way, and that's just where you're comfortable from, or comfortable at, I should say, that's quite all right. But I think a lot of drummers, when they're first starting, don't think of ergonomics, okay? When you're sitting at your, behind your drum kit, everything should be in a, a comfortable position that you don't have to reach too far. You're not reaching up too high or down too low. It should be all right in front of you so you can play with finesse. I basically just don't get too tired too quickly, okay? And there's ways to do that by setting up the drums in the right position. First thing I wanna talk about is the height of your seat, okay? I feel the best position is to be just high enough to where the top of your thigh is not parallel to the ground exactly, but you're sitting just a little bit, so there's a tiny bit of an angle of your thigh compared to the ground. This will give you a little bit of momentum when you're pressing down the pedals, and I think it keeps your posture a little bit better, easier on your lower back, okay? Sitting too low where your legs are up like this, there are drummers that do it, I don't think that's the best way to go. There's also drummers, some very famous drummers that have been playing like this for their whole careers where they're basically standing up, okay? Chester Thompson being one, Mike Portnoy, they sit really, really high, they've been doing that their whole lives and they're comfortable playing like that. I wouldn't suggest that for a brand new player, but you know, it works for them, that's okay. We're gonna go back to this way where I think is the best place to start. First thing you wanna do, so your, your thigh is a little bit beyond parallel to the ground. Snare drum height. I like to play the snare with a tiny bit of an angle, so you, your angle adjustment is right here, just below where you tighten the snare drum basket. There's a wing nut on this Thomas stand, right? It tilts the drum backwards and forwards, so I put it not parallel to the ground, just a tiny bit of an angle, okay? Now that's a little bit high, so we'll loosen the wing nut here and go down just a tiny bit. So what I'm looking for is when I hit the snare drum, I want my forearm to be parallel to the ground, okay? And that's basically where you want to hit the drum, okay? So I could actually go up a little bit higher. This is just below parallel. To me, it's pretty comfortable. So we're gonna start there. We haven't even got to the rack toms yet. We're gonna go to the floor tom here. What I think is super important is to get your floor tom at the exact same height and angle as your snare drum. So you just gotta, Loosen the legs. Remember that the badge of the floor tom is facing out so the audience can see it. This also makes it easy to adjust the angle and, and the height of the drum. 
Now don't be worried if there's a little bit of space that's different on each of the floor tom legs. That's because your drum is not perfectly flat to the ground. It, has, it is at a little bit of an angle. So each floor tom leg, the height is going to be slightly different, but that's okay. All right, so now the snare drum and the floor tom are pretty much the exact same height, same angle, and I could easily get to both drums. Now let's talk about these rack toms. Let me show you on this particular kit. This tom mount is in the shape of a V. The bottom of the V is what faces you as the player. That way you can get the drums as close as you want to almost touching each other. If it was turned around, you wouldn't be able to get them that close to each other. So, that being said, put the drum back on. Okay. Now, let's talk about angle. The rack tom should be facing you directly. Not at an angle like this, and definitely not at an angle like that. Okay. If you search the internet and look at drum pictures, people on different kits, you'll see drums, toms facing all kinds of directions. Well, I want to tell you is that ergonomics in drums is key for comfort, for playing with, not to get too tired, not to reach, not to hurt your back, not to have bad posture. It all helps in that thing, okay? So the rack tom facing you. Let's get the second rack tom at the same angle. Now, you can get them a little bit closer together by loosening the wing nut, like this. There you go, okay? Now, there's also a little bit of space left to lower these drums a little bit more. What I'm looking for as a player is to have, really to have the toms as low as possible. So let's see how far down these can go. About right there. You don't want to have the bottom of the rack toms touching the kick drum, okay? If they're touching the kick drum, you've gone too far down. So right about here, both drums are facing me directly. It's almost like a straight line to the front hoop of the kick drum itself. Okay, just like that. Make sure they're tight. Now, move your snare drum up a little bit. So the hoop is just above the kick drum hoop. Okay, again, snare drum, floor tom, same level, same angle. Rack toms are at a nice angle. They're not too far forward, not too flat and they're exactly both at the same angle facing me. So now, as a player, I can go all around the drums. They're all right in front of me. I don't have to reach too far. I'm not reaching up too high or reaching too low. It's all right in front of me at a nice angle. The snare drum rim shot be almost parallel to the ground. My form will be almost parallel to the ground. And I can get all around the drums, backwards and forwards, nice and easily. Okay, I'm gonna show you this exact same thing on the pearl kit. Let's go over there. Okay, we're gonna start, same thing. I'm sitting, my angle of my leg is a little bit of a parallel, so let's get the height of the snare drum first. Wing nuts are facing towards me, so it's nice and easy to bend down. That's a, still a tiny bit too high. See how my arm is a little, bit, a little bit too much above parallel here? It's not flat like this, but it's a little bit too high. So I'm gonna go down maybe another half an inch. There you go, okay? Now, a couple things of why you don't wanna place the drums too low. Basically, it's bad for your wrists and bad for your back, okay? If the snare drum was way down here and you sit really low where your thighs are up, up, you know, beyond parallel in the other direction, to hit a rim shot, you're gonna have to bend your wrist like this to get down here, okay? You're gonna have to bend over. Your back is gonna have a, you know, a roundness to it rather than sitting up nice and straight. You might be able to play like this for a while, but after 10, 20, 30 years, I guarantee you're gonna have back problems and wrist problems. So it's, if you're gonna start out playing drums, set up the right way, ergonomically, the, from the first day, and you'll be glad you did. Let's grab the floor tom, remember? Badge is facing out. And let's get the floor tom at the exact same spot as the snare drum. I need to lower these legs a little bit. Okay, it's still a little bit higher right here. And this is just kind of trial and error once you get You'll get used to playing with the heights of the floor tom legs once you get started. And then once you get close to your exact height and angle, a little bit goes a long way. You'll make a lot of tiny little adjustments. There you go. Pretty even. Snare drum and floor tom. Now let's work on these rack toms. In order to get this pearl rack tom version at the right angle, you loosen the wing nut here. For this one, it's right over here. Tilt it down one, okay, or two and then loosen the wing nut here and start moving the drum back and forth to get it at the right angle. So now the drum is facing me, just like we talked about on the Tama kit. It's directly facing me and at a pretty nice angle. So let's do the same with the second rack tom. 
Okay, now right now I'm going to have to lower this drum down with the main tube that goes into the kick drum. So let's do that. Loosen her up. Push it down just a little bit so I can get it nice and even with the first rack tom. Okay, again, remember, don't go too far down. You don't want the, this rack tom touching the kick drum at all. So that looks pretty good. So let me go over here and give it a, a tighten it up a little bit. There you go. All right, now with these pearl drums, what's kind of cool about this particular tom mounting system is that since you are mounting them on a rod like this rather than a rod pointing straight up like on the Tama kit, you can come out towards you a little bit. You don't have to have the drum, this rod, all the way in. You can come a little bit out so you can kind of mess with the angles facing you, if that makes sense. So let's put it back on. That's all the way in. I'm thinking it might be kind of cool to come out just about a, about a half an inch this way. So there is room to maneuver like that. Okay, there you go. Both drums are facing me straight on. Floor tom and the snare drum are at the exact same height and same angle, and I can get up and around the drums nice and easy. They're all facing me, not at any weird angles. It's nice and ergonomic. I'm sitting at the right height. Let's put the cymbals on and start rocking. First, let's place the hi-hat stand, which goes to the left of the snare. I'm going to put the straight stand on the hi-hat side. This actually can go either way, but with the boom arm on the ride cymbal, you can adjust it to where there's just more adjustment opportunities with the boom arm, like this when the ride cymbal is on the floor tom side. Let's do the same with the pearl kit. Hi hat stand there, straight stand, boom stand. Playing drums, I think it's good to get in the habit of doing things the same way every time. You'll notice when you go into studios and different places where there's a lot of drum kits being set up and torn down, people do things really quickly and it could be kind of a mess. So if you get into the habit of doing things, things a certain way, you'll just make it easier on yourself on your back because let's face it, setting up and tearing down drums can be a pain sometimes, it can be hard on the body. One thing I like to do is face all of the wing nuts on all of the stands towards me, okay? I don't want to be reaching. So you'll notice these wing nuts are facing out that way. So just turn the stand around like this and the wing nuts are, they're not exactly facing towards me, but I can reach them a lot easier than if I had to go behind the stand, especially when there's going to be a symbol on here, okay? Now where to place the symbols? Okay, you want to have, just like you had the snare drum tripod where the one leg was facing the player, do the same with your symbols. okay? Put one of the tripod legs facing towards you or somewhat towards you so when you hit the symbol, there won't be any chance for the stand to fall over side to side or backwards, okay? The pressure of you hitting the cymbal and crashing on it's going to pull the stand and the cymbal forward towards you. So it's good to have that leg also pointing towards you. I'm going to lower this just a little bit and let's put the ride cymbal on. So the first thing you want to do is take off the wing nut and take off one of the felts. Okay. There's a plastic piece here. This is going to protect the whole of your cymbal. Okay. You want to make sure there's a piece of plastic here. Every cymbal company has a little bit different way of doing things as far as that is concerned but they'll all have something there to protect the symbol. So that's that, and then you put on the one piece of felt, and there's a little bit of the plastic hanging up. So let me grab the ride symbol right now. Symbol goes on, another piece of felt, and tighten her down. You want to have the symbol have a little bit of give. So don't tighten it so tight where there's, it's completely rigid. That's actually not that good for the symbol, okay? Give it a little bit of room to breathe and to move. Now you want to place it again where you're comfortable and again where it's ergonomic. But it, you know, this is going to get to a point now where it's going to become up to you, the player. But from the first time playing, I would say do something like this. So the ride symbol is right next to my second rack tom. And if I'm facing the drums properly, I can reach over here and still hit all of the tom-toms and the ride and get to the bell of the ride cymbal without having to reach too far. So I'm still sitting straight up and I'm going to hit the bell right on here, okay? And it's out of the way of the other drums. If you get yourself a second crash cymbal, you would put it right here to the right of this crash cymbal, probably right above it a little bit. But for now, let's get to the first crash cymbal over here on my left. First thing I'm going to do is twist this stand a little bit so that the tripod leg is facing me and the wing nuts are facing me. Take off the wing nut and the felt. All right. Remember to leave a little room so the symbol can move. Okay, not too tight. 
Now, before you place your crash symbol in the exact spot, I would say put your hi-hat symbols on because that'll determine where you're going to place the crash symbol. So let's get to the hi-hats. On hi-hat symbols, there is a top and a bottom, and they're meant to be that way. That's how it gives the symbols their sound. If you put the bottom, and usually it's the bottom symbol that is thicker than the top symbol, okay? Now these both are labeled pretty clearly. You can't miss it. So this says hi-hat bottom. This is the one that's going to go onto the piece of felt on the hi-hat stand. The rod goes through and then it just sits on the felt right there. The top symbol is where you connect the clutch, okay? So just unscrew the bottom of the clutch like this. Okay, there's the screw. Take out one of the pieces of felt, okay? This rod is going to go through the symbol, the hole of the symbol, okay? Stick it through, put the felt on the other side, and then tighten the screw onto the bottom. Okay, this particular clutch, it's not going to let me go any farther, so it's tight there. So you, to, in order to tighten the symbol on to the clutch, you're going to have to screw the top screws down a little bit, okay? See, I'm screwing it down. There's two screws up here. One's a locking nut, so you get to where you, the tightness you want, and then screw down the second one, and it'll lock it in place and, and hold it there, okay? So there you go. The clutch is connected now to the symbol, and it's ready to go on the rod. So let's put it on the rod here, just like that. Now get the symbol in place. So you want to have it a good height. What I try to do is not have the symbol too high, okay? To me, that's too high. You're reaching up to get to the hi-hat. Again, this is about ergonomics and ease of use, okay? So you can play comfortably and for a long period of time. So I go to where it's just about even with the first rack tom, okay? They're about exactly the same height. You go just to the edge of the rack tom here and over, you're going to get to the hi-hat symbols. Now, this is a good time to make sure that you have the tripod down flat enough as you can so it's not shaking around. So what I do is just loosen the one wing nut and make sure it's flat and solid. And then you'll press down the foot pedal a little bit. You'll see the rod goes down when you press the foot pedal. Push it down a little bit, tighten the clutch, the wing nut on the clutch, and now your hi-hat symbols are up. I personally don't think it's good to put the hi-hats way over so where you're really crossing your arms a lot like this, okay? That's not comfortable. Most right-handed players play drums where their right hand is the lead, so they're, they're gonna be the one hitting the hi-hat or the ride cymbal like this and driving the groove. There are open-handed players where the left hand is the lead on a right-handed drum kit, but we're gonna assume that you are playing the more typical way where your right hand is crossed over your left hand, okay? So you wanna have space. You wanna be able to kind of move back and forth like this. So if you're really reaching over farther forward, you're gonna to have to go a lot farther to get your arm back over to the tom. So all that being said, just have it so you're not reaching too far. And your feet should be in a normal position like you're just sitting at a chair. You'll be able to see a little bit clearly when I, more clearly when I get over to the tama kit. But basically your feet should be just like you sit down. Not spread out too wide, not too closed in. You don't want your feet spread like this. Just nice and natural, just like you're sitting down. That's kind of where I'm at here. What I am noticing is that this seat was lowering while I was sitting down on it. So I'm going to tighten up this drum throne and get back to the proper height. Okay, now I'm back in business. The final thing we have to place is this crash symbol. We have the hi-hats placed. So now I'm just going to pull it in a little bit farther. I don't want it to be covering the rack tom at all. I just want to have it there, so I can reach it and hit it and get right to the rack tom if I need to. Last thing I want to talk about is the angle of the symbol. Here there's not necessarily a right or a wrong. What you want to do, playing it completely flat is okay. I like to play at a little bit of an angle of the crash symbols towards me. I would say don't play it where the, it's, the symbol is facing the, other, the opposite direction, okay? So I put it at a tiny bit of an angle. And the height is uh, just a comfortable height. It's not too high, it's not too low, and again, it's away from the other drum, so it's, I have a nice clear path to the rack tom, to the hi-hats, and to the crash cymbal. Ergonomically, I can get around to all of the tom-toms and the ride cymbals right there. So it's all right in front of me. No weird angles anywhere, nice and easy. I feel comfortable just sitting here, just like I sat down in my favorite chair. So let's do the same thing with the Tama kit. We're ready to go. Okay, for this Tom Imperial Star kit, you get a set of, of Minel HCS cymbals. These are really nice cymbals, and the hi-hats, they are marked just like the Zildjian ones were. So this is the bottom symbol. Take off the clutch, off the rod, okay? The rod's right there. Put this first symbol down onto the felt. You're good to go. Same thing with this clutch. You just unscrew the bottom thing here. Take off one of the pieces of felt. There you go. Get your top symbol, put it through the symbol, the other piece of felt on, and screw the screw back on. Okay, again, it'll only go so far. It's tight now. 
So in order to tighten down the clutch onto the symbol, you take the screws on top and just screw them down and you'll feel it tightening together. There you go. We're set. Now take the clutch, put it on the rod, and you're good to go. Now these Tama stands are cool because they have these locking wing nuts up here. They're a little bit different than a normal wing nut, but they're not very easy to use. All you do is squeeze and pull. Okay, you don't have to twist it on. Again, squeeze to, to put it back on, squeeze to take it off. It's a really cool feature, really nice. So you do, you get a 16 inch crash symbol here. Take off one of the pieces of felt. Again, it has its own symbol protector like the other stand did, right? One of the felt goes on. Put the symbol on, felt on top of that. Here, let me put this at an angle so you can see better. Squeeze, on, and you're good to go. Now, at this point, you can it does twist, okay, and tighten on. So what happens is, is that you get it to the tightness you want, and then it's locked in position, okay? So now you can take the memory lock and go back in and out and get right back to the same spot. Okay, there we go. Let's lower this guy a little bit, get out of the way so you can see the ride symbol over here. Again, it has the same memory lock wing nut on top. Take off one of the pieces of felt. You get a 20 inch ride symbol with this kit as well. Put it on and there you go. Squeeze and you're good to go. Now this stand is good. One of the tripod legs is facing me. The wing nuts are also facing me, so that's good. I have to adjust this ride symbol stand over here. So let me get up and do that real quickly. Just making the tripod a little bit wider so it's a little more sturdy. Then facing one of the legs towards me. And now let's get it in position. Here we go. Just loosen the boom arm and it'll twist towards me. That's good, like that. Okay, at this point, it's pretty close, but I think this ride symbol is tilted up a little bit too much. So I'm just gonna loosen the boom arm a tiny bit so I can turn the symbol towards me. This is a very small adjustment. All right, there you go. Ride symbol is out of the way of the second rack, Tom. It's right there where I can reach it and I can hit the bell with the stick. The shoulder of the stick is gonna get right there in the middle of the bell. So that's nice and easy. Don't have to reach too far, it's right there. Let's place the crash symbol and we're all done. Oh, and the hi-hats too. I kind of like the height, but I'm gonna make the angle down one, raise it up a little bit. There you go. Okay, it's out of the way of the rack tom. It's at a nice angle, nice clear path to the crash and the tom-toms. Now let's get this hi-hat stand placed. So this is what I was talking about earlier. You sit down at your throne and where your feet go naturally, just like you're sitting at any chair, is basically where you should have the pedals placed, okay? If you had a double pedal here, it would be the exact same thing, a double kick drum pedal, I should say. You would do the exact same thing. You want to sit down and have your feet in a nice natural position, okay? Not too wide, not too skinny like this because they can't fit there, but just nice, natural, easy sitting position. I like this here, okay? That seems nice and natural to me. My arms aren't too crossed over each other. They're right here. Clear path to all the drums and now it's time to make some music. All right, everybody. Setting up a drum kit for the very first time can be a sort of a daunting task. There's lots of little pieces and little parts and there's angles to think about and where the drums are placed. But I hope this video helped to show you that it's really not that hard. When you think about it, make sure everything's nice and ergonomic and you're comfortable behind the kit. Make sure the angles that you set your drums at are comfortable for you to reach, okay? Drumming should be easy on your body. It's not a very easy thing to do all of the time, but when you sit down behind your kit, you want to be comfortable so you can play at your best for a long period of time. So in closing, everybody, I encourage you to check out all of your favorite drummers out there and look at how they set up their drum kits. Ask questions, do some research, and you'll find little ways to tweak your drum kit to make it nice and comfortable for you. But I hope that you found this video a good starting point to set up a drum kit in a basic way that's comfortable for your body. Thanks a lot for watching.